Hare Krishna. A very hearty welcome to all of you to the divine abode of Sri Radha Gopi Ballab, that in the Iskon Boston Temple. And we are celebrating, as you all know, we are celebrating the most auspicious festival of Sri Sri Ram Bhagavan. Sri Ram Bhagavan Ki Jai. Sri Sri Sita Ram Bhagavan Bhagavan Ki Jai. So, now we'll start with the next part of our program. We have His Grace Radhishan Prabhu, who has agreed to give his divine association to us, who is available with us for some time. So, Sri Sri Radhishan Prabhu, he did his masters from IIT Mumbai, where he was a topper of his branch. After diligently not only studying, after working for a few years, he, did, he wanted to dedicate his life for service of all people and to broadcast the message of Sri Srimad Bhagavad Gita. For that, he enters the renounced order of life. He has been a celibate monk for more than 30 years now, and he has been the president of ISKCON Pune which has a community of more than 6,000 people. And he's also one of the presidents in this one, Hyderabad in Abbots. So he is leading a community of thousands of people. Also, he has received multiple awards like the Jeev Goswami Award for his innovative outreach to youth. He has written multiple books. He has spoken in more than hundreds of universities from all IITs and IITs, Pune University, COEP, and at in, in the United States at Stanford, MIT, Harvard, in the Northeastern University. So he has spoken at so many multiple places. And let us hear from his divine his grace Radeshan Prabhu, the divine words of Radeshan Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu, for giving your time. Yeah. Is the volume loud and clear? Uh, Ramchand, please, my volume loud and clear? Yes, yes. Please. Yeah. Welcome, uh, welcome all of you for the occasion of Ram Nami. I congratulate you for taking out your precious time and coming and spending your time in this beautiful spiritual ambience of this con Boston temple. <clears throat> you see, Ramayana is not a novel, book, which is meant for reading and throwing away. Ramayana teaches a way of life, a practical set of teachings that will boost our character, boost our devotion to God, and give us a set of life tools of which if we live by that, we can experience great joy in this world and in the world to come. So in today's uh, half, an hour, half an hour session, I will share some things with you, uh, which you will find uh, meaningful to apply in your own personal lives and uh, uh, benefit from them immensely. <clears throat> in this world, all of us do many things. Go here, go there, do this, do that. Our life sometimes becomes extremely busy. Uh, but one should ask a question. Why am I doing what I am doing? What is the purpose behind all our activities? If you very carefully think about it, you will come to the conclusion that actually we all are looking for, uh, ultimately, uh, to give love and receive love. And that is the core of all our activities. Like, for example, a man goes to an office, works and makes money, <clears throat> brings home. He wants to see his wife happy, children happy. And when he provides for their needs and everything, takes care of them, protects them. Seeing them happy, he feels happy also. Similarly, all of his students have come to America. You want to study well. You want to graduate from your colleges. You want to take up jobs and well and show your parents that you are successful in life uh, uh, and uh, you are flourishing in life so you want them to see and be happy you you want to see them happy they want to see you happy <clears throat> and in that exchange of love we experience an inexplicable joy for which we all are living our lives 
actually although everybody uh, imperceptibly knows what i am saying about uh, love the nature of that love is often not so well understood therefore another 5 5 minutes i will explain about that there are so many love novels there are so many love movies there are so many love songs um, but yet we find in this world there is something very greatly lacking in the hearts of people people are very poverty stricken <laughs> in their hearts so uh, how do we experience that deeply nourishing love in our hearts there are two words in sanskrit nishrayas and abhyudai abhyudai means accomplishments nishrayas means fulfillment for example accomplishment means like for example you wear a very nice dress attractive dress you have a very good hairstyle uh, you decorate yourself nicely but that is for the other people to see whereas when you eat a nourishing food that nourishes your body so food nourishes your body dress may be attractive to others in the same manner abhyudai means accomplishments which we can show off to others i have achieved a degree abroad i have presented a paper in a conference or i got a gold medal in my sports match or something so the world may applaud for you but that doesn't deeply satisfy you deep in the heart what deeply satisfies is you is the fulfillment which is called as nishrayas and if i ask you which one do you want you want nishrayas or abhyudai you want fulfillment of the heart or accomplishments naturally all of you will say that we want both we want both we want to achieve material success and we also want inner fulfillment therefore our scriptures are so kind they present us both the balance between material accomplishments on one hand and spiritual fulfillment on the other hand they teach both for uh, what you have uh, come to temple for is that spiritual fulfillment and the whole world is poverty stricken without that spiritual fulfillment although they have many many accomplishments accomplishments are like a hollow uh, success hollow success means that externally they look attractive but internally they are hollow so today let us see how do we attain this inner fulfillment or the nishrayas which can satisfy us and we will be able to satisfy others with that so one of the first things i told you uh, is love so when we talk about love in the ramayana you find uh, this principle of love so vividly explained what is the meaning of love actually the love is a sublime feeling that we, we feel for someone in this world for example parents and children if you see parents sacrifice themselves for the sake of the children and the children when they grow up they feel something towards the parents that we want to return back what we have received similarly i told you the relationship of husband and wife but actually when all living beings uh, awaken that feeling for god then that sublime feeling of love takes its biggest shape why because initially we love only our mother then we love our mother and father then we love our mother brother father sister then we love our caste people then we love our state people then we love our country people then we love all human beings still our love is incomplete because people even though they love all human beings of the world their humanitarian feelings they have they still kill animals like they may kill a goat or a chicken or a cow they still harm some creatures poor creatures but our love is considered to be complete when that love is reposed towards the supreme the supreme divine lord who is so kind he comes to this world like krishna like rama and he performs certain activities in this world what we call as leela or pastimes by reading which by understanding which by hearing about which you know we can learn many many principles for our uh, daily life in ramayana we learn love the very first thing love means sacrifice where there is no sacrifice there is no love you will see a mother is attending to needs of a child but the child is waking up in the middle of the night and crying sometimes passing stool and urine if somebody goes to that mother and says hey your child is so naughty and so uh, troublesome hand over your child to your orphanage 
the mother will get wild. Mother will give a slap to the fellow who said it. She will say that, yes, that child is giving trouble, but I'm pretty happy. Because it's called this burden of love. She is ready to take that burden of raising the child because she is doing it in a mood of sacrifice. So, in the same manner, you will find in Rama and a sacrifice. When Lord Rama was told to go to forest, and guess what he did? He was the only one asked to go to forest. And he was ready to go. He went and told his mother, mother Kaushalya, that I have been ordered to go to forest, mother. Don't worry, 14 years will go like a minute. I'll come back. But Mother Kaushalya said, why are you only listening to your father? Is it not the duty of a son to listen to your mother also? And Ram asked her, what is your order, my dear mother? She said, your father is telling you to go to forest. I am telling you not to go. You stay back. And Ram said, see, I will follow your order surely, provided your order aligns with father's order. <laughs> like that he said. He doesn't tally with father's order. Yeah, for you, he is the husband. So your order is not aligning with his, he said. Then the mother said, okay, you follow your father's order. Go to forest, but take me with you. Ram said, your wife should never be separated from the husband. Your wife should always stay with the husband. Husband and wife are like two, you know, two, um, one soul in two bodies. They are inseparable. Like Ardhana Arishwar, Shiva and Parvati, you say. So when he said it, Kaushala started crying loudly. She said, neither are you staying back, my child, nor are you taking me with you. Why do you want to see me separated from you? Then Ram said, mother, for a son without the blessings of the mother, how can he accomplish success in life? I'm going to forest for 14 years. If you weep like this, I will only attain misfortune. But if you bless me, I will attain all good fortune. So hearing that, Kaushala immediately wiped her tears, called the Brahmins and made them chant the auspicious mantras for the blessings of her son. In this way, he pacified his mother and convinced her to stay back. Then he went to his wife, Sita. And Sita always would keep praying for the welfare of Ram. So when Sita came, he told her that, you may be aware, Sita, that I am supposed to go to forest for 14 years. Don't worry. Stay under the safe custody of three mothers. And I will come back very quickly. Sita asked him, what are you talking? You will go to forest and I will stay back in the palace and enjoy the comforts of the palace. How can you even propose such a ridiculous thing? Ram said, you see, you may be eager to come with me, but the forest life is no good life for you. There will be animals praying for food. There is no good place to sleep at night. We have to sleep under the trees. And also, there is danger for one's life in the forest. And I am a man. I can adjust anywhere. <clears throat> for you, it may be impossible for you. In the palace, you have soft beds to sleep. You have protection of the palace. You have mothers to tend to your needs and care. Don't worry. You will stay back. <clears throat> and I will come back very soon. Sita said, you see, for a wife, to be in the company of the husband is the greatest joy. If I come with you to the forest, I'll see the beauty of the mountains and waterfalls and the dancing peacocks and the singing cuckoos. And in your company, I will feel it like heaven. On the contrary, if you tell me to stay back, here in the palace, even a soft bed will be appearing like a bed of thorns for me. One moment I can't pass without you, she said. And saying this, she cried out loudly and said, if you forcibly make me stay back, you will not find me alive when you come back. I will either consume poison or I will enter into some river or I will enter into fire and you will not find me alive. When Ram saw her weeping like this, he embraced Sita and said, Hey Sita, I can't actually consider going to forest all alone without you. But I still wanted to conduct a test for you. Now you have passed the test. Don't worry. You have clearly proven to me that you really want to come with me. Then I will take you, don't worry, he said. So I was deeply touched when I read this. Why? Imagine if it was any other husband, he would have told his wife, my dear wife, I've been ordered to go to forest 14 years. So you also pack up your luggage, you have to come with me. And the wife will cry out and say, no, 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 forest life is not for me, it's for you. Punishment is only for you, not for me, the wife may say. Husband may say, no, 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 if you don't come, then who will cook for me in the forest? I can't be all alone. 
So imagine if both of them are having a tug of war, pulling and pushing one another, how ridiculous it will be, <laughs> isn't it? So that's not what happened in Ramayana. Ram is telling Sita, you stay back, stay back, be comfortable. Sita is telling, no, I will come, I will come with you. Ram says, no, it will be troublesome, don't come, relax, relax. He's saying, no, I, I, my life is not for relaxing, my life is for sacrifice. I'll come with you. And Sita said, I'll walk ahead of you and remove the thorns on your way so that when you walk uh, in the forest, you'll, you will find a path free from thorns. Uh, that's what she said. And uh, she actually wanted to offer her life as a sacrifice to him. Then uh, Lord Rama went to Lakshman. He told Lakshman, you please take care of the three mothers. I have been told to go to forest for 14 years. Lakshman said, why should I be here to take care of the three mothers? Bharat will be the king and let him take care. I am already ready with my luggage to go with you to the forest. And Lakshman said, <clears throat> why am I going with you to the forest? I will walk ahead of both of you, Sita and Ram, who will be behind me. And uh, I will carry the bow and arrow in my hand. And I will keep all the forest animals away. And wherever we go, I will make a beautiful cottage for both of you to have a nice peaceful stay. And I'll find out a water body. I'll find out the fruits and berries and vegetables and all the eatables for you. And I will be taking a vow not to sleep for 14 years. <clears throat> and I'll be keeping wide awake at night, going with my bow and arrow around your hut to offer you all kinds of protection. So he said, I, I can't be separated from you even for a moment. When Lord Ram saw his enthusiasm, <laughs> he was so standing, he said, Lakshman, you are unstoppable. Your enthusiasm is uh, unwavering enthusiasm. You have always to be with me. Okay, I'll definitely take you with me. Mm -hmm. He said. So here is uh, Lakshman again. See, love means voluntary. Mm -hmm. Love is not forced. It is actually, there is a deep feeling to serve. Like all of you, your eagerness to serve your mother and father is actually not forced by anybody. It's voluntary. Mm -hmm. And first I told you, love implies sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And in the platform of love, it goes beyond the step of duty. Duty, feeling of duty brings you responsibility, sense of responsibility. But the sense of responsibility is not enough. When the duty turns into love, the sense of responsibility turns into sacrifice. You will see that. And in that platform, one goes an extra mile, even willing to lay down oneself. For example, when Lord Rama went to the forest, you will find <clears throat> when Bharata returned back, he came to know the whole story and he cried out loudly and he was angry with Kaike. And then he took all the Ayodhyavasis uh, to the forest. So when he went to meet Ram, uh, I will show you a picture of Bharata meeting Ram. So <clears throat> when Bharata went to the forest, uh, yeah, here is what you see, Bharata, Bharata and Ram Milab. This is another example of pure love. When Bharata saw Lord Rama's hair was matted hair, even from a distance, he cried out, cried out loudly, Oh, brother, you don't deserve to wear matted locks of hair. And you don't deserve to live in the forest. Saying like this, Bharata fell to the ground, crying loudly unconscious. And Lord Rama sprinkled water on his face and picked him up and embraced him. At that time, Lord Rama found Bharat was also having he was also wearing a dress made of tree bark. And he understood why Bharata did that. Bharata wanted to go to forest and be a proxy in the place of Rama. And he wanted to send back Ram to Ayodhya to be made the king. And he was adamant on that. He told Ram, look at the three widowed mothers have come along with our Guruji Vasishta. And all the Ayodhyavasis are here. We all are determined to take you back. You are the king of Ayodhya. I am your younger brother. You should lead. And we will all follow you. You are the hero of our life. Here is Bharat. Not at all greedy for the royal post. He wants to offer the royal post to Lord Rama. And Lord Rama wants to make Bharata the king. He told Bharat, no, no, Bharat. We have to follow the order of the father. I will stay in the forest for 14 years. You should be the king. Rama is telling, you be the king. Bharat is telling Ram, you be the king. See, there's a competition here, but the competition is one of love. Uh, loving competition. 
way back in 91, I remember, when I was a student of IIT Bombay, uh, uh, two boys were belonging to the same township. So they were living next to my room. So I saw one of them was packing a suitcase. The other friend came and told him, hey, do you have a place in your suitcase? He asked him. His friend said, no, there is no place, he said. Still the other fellow forcibly opened the suitcase and saw there was indeed some place. He took his backpack and put it inside the suitcase and said, hey, my backpack fits very well in your suitcase, so carry it, <laughs> he told them. And his friend said, am I a donkey to carry your, your luggage? And then he said, see, I will accommodate your luggage in my, I'll accommodate your backpack in my suitcase, but then you have to lift my suitcase, he said. The other fellow laughed off and said, suitcase is yours, not mine, you lift it. And he ran away to the railway station. I was watching how people are exploitative in this world. He's putting his luggage in his friend's suitcase and he wants his friend to lift his suitcase. How ridiculous it is. I thought like that. And then later on, I invited these fellows for the Gita classes. After a month, they started coming. One year later, I saw a, I saw a strange sight, an amazing sight. The same fellows were again going for summer vacation to home. So the fellow was uh, packing up his suitcase and he asked his friend, hey, bring your backpack, I will put it in my suitcase, he said. And his friend, uh, friend was hesitating to give it. He said, how can I give my suitcase to you? Uh, how can I give my backpack to you? I will lift my luggage, you will lift yours, he said. But his friend forcibly took the backpack and put it in his suitcase and closed it. Then the friend said, since you have carried my luggage in your suitcase, I will carry the suitcase, he said. Then his owner of the suitcase, he said, no, I will carry. They both were actually pulling it. I will carry, I will carry, I will carry. <laughs> so I could see that one year before they had an exploitative competition. Now, one year later, now they have a loving competition now. And the change was brought about because of the spiritual classes they were attending in the Gita, uh, regular programs they were attending. So in this world, uh, it's very rare to see a loving competition like what Bharata and Lord Rama had. They both wanted each other to be the king. They didn't say selfishly, I will occupy the king's post. Just like I asked children once, a group of children, if you catch, uh, if you go to the train, which place will you sit in a train or a flight? So all the children said, I will sit in the window seat. Huh? What about others? I asked. He said, I don't care about others. I like the window seat. I would like to sit. <laughs> so in this world, you generally find people that are thinking first about themselves. But love implies sacrifice. There is a nice saying, Paropakaraya bhahanti nadya, paropakaraya phalanti vriksha, paropakaraya duhanti gavva, paropakaraya idam shariram. This verse says, the trees in this world are selfless, they give away mango fruits for others, even when you throw a stone at them. If you see the rivers, they give abundant water supply, they don't drink the water. If you see the rain clouds, they shower rain water for you. They don't uh, receive water. They, they want to give you. If you see the cows, they give you cow's milk. They don't expect anything from you. Uh, so in the same manner, uh, all these uh, creatures in nature created by God, they all are giving. Because God originally is giving, God gives, gives and forgives. We get, get and forget, it is said. Mm. So love implies giving. Love implies sacrifice. Um, Love is voluntary. And the uh, love is completely satisfied in simply rendering service. This is another thing. Love implies service also. Say, if a man marries a woman, <clears throat> he, he, he can't just tell the woman that I love you very much. He has to give her a house. He has to give her clothes. He has to give her ornaments. He has to give her a car. He has to give her facility. Love implies service. Like when parents are making their, putting their children in the school or college, they supply them for you know, money for the food, accommodation, everything, isn't it? So love implies service. Similarly, you will find hmm, Sita is serving Ram. Hmm, Lakshman is serving Ram. Now Bharat also, on the order of Ram, went back, but he didn't become king of Ayodhya. He put Rama's paduka, the, uh, you know, the footwear on the asana. <clears throat> 14 years, Bharat was living underground because he thought Rama will sleep on the ground, I will sleep underground. When Rama will sleep on cot, I will sleep on the ground. Therefore, because in forest there will be no cot, he will sleep on the ground, I will sleep underground. And 14 years, Rama may not eat well. So Bharat also ate only barley mixed with cow urine. 14 years, he ate very austere food. 
and he worshipped the Paduka just like Rama himself. Yeah. So this type of sublime relationships of Bharata and Rama are so touching to the heart. I will end with a small uh, 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 real life episode. <clears throat> In uh, Pune, there was one very big millionaire family. They come from a Vaishya family and they had schools, they had colleges, they had factories, they had f- farm communities in the village. In the city also, they had many, many shopping malls. Very rich family. Uh, they were practically billionaires. So this family once invited me for a program in the house. I went. Two, three times they called me, I went. Then for a year, they didn't call me. But one year later, the father, uh, elderly man, who was 82 years old, he called me and said, uh, Rajeshwamji, can you please come to my home? There's a big quarrel amongst my two sons, he said. I asked, what is the matter? He said, I'm dividing my property amongst them. So, but now there's a big uh, uh, fight amongst my brothers. You know, which property, who will take? Sometimes in the daytime they agree, night they go to their wives and talk. Again, next day morning they come back with a different opinion and they say that, you know, no, we don't want this, we want that, we want this and all that. Last one week my sleep is gone, he was telling. So please come and help me sort out this. I said, see, I will not interfere in your family affairs, but I can speak some um, Katha from Ramayana, Mahabharata, Bhagavatam. I said, he agreed for it. So I went to his house. So I just spoke this Bharat Mila past time, which I told you just now, how Bharat and Rama, they had a pure love for each other. Bharat said, I will not go back to palace. And Rama smiled and told Bharat, Bharat, if you really love me, uh, you may say that you will not go back to palace or you will commit suicide. But this is not a sign of love. There are many people who commit suicide in this world. If you leave one body, the Atma will get one more body. It's not nothing great deal. But real love means to obey your superior. Real love means obedience, he said. At that time, there were devatas in the sky. They told Bharat, follow the order of your brother. They said, because they became afraid. If Bharat takes back Ram to Ayodhya, then who will kill Ravana? And the Ravana will remain and he will be atrocious. They were worried. Then uh, Bharat told Ram, okay, as per your teaching to me, I will follow your order. I am going back only for your pleasure. I am taking care of Ayodhya only to please you. But if you are one day late, beyond 14 years, you will not find me alive, he said. This is Bharat. So I told this story and both, that all the family members, they were all amazed. And the two brothers who were grown up and they were also running industries. They looked at each other and said, Ram and Bharat are fighting out of love and we are fighting out of selfishness. So uh, that's what they were talking, I heard in the night, that night. So then I, uh, I was offering mala to different people. So these two brothers also came and took mala and they also did Hare Krishna Japa. Next day morning, I got a call from the elderly man. Shanti, thank you so much. My job is done now. I have written the will. My two sons came to me after the lecture. They said, Father, whatever you give, we will accept. We, we don't want to quarrel with each other. So I was so amazed that Ramayana can teach us life lessons, which can dissolve a problem of a big billionaire family you know, in just by one lecture. You can see that there is so much to learn in our lives. So on this uh, occasion of Ramayana, Ram Nami, I just spoke one principle to you, mm, the principle of pure love. Mm. Initially, we all feel love for mother and father and family and friends. But the same love extends to selfless service to the humanity at large. But then you understand life in this world is uh, short. Mm. It is a 60, 70, 80, 90 years max. Mm. Who lives beyond 100 years in this body? The Atma has to leave the body. And then we also forget our relationship to this mother and father. Then you get a new mother, father. Then you're born in some new country. You speak a new language. The Atma is taking birth and death again and again. Why? God is giving us these multiple opportunities and multiple bodies to gradually bring out the beautiful personality out of us. The pure personality, selfless personality, loving personality. Just like if you take a marble block and you can chisel out unwanted portion to bring out a beautiful murti out of a marble block. Similarly, God is bringing, bringing out the beautiful personality out of us by chiseling out unwanted portion in multiple lifetimes. So in this lifetime, you all are very blessed, I would say, because you have come to this temple, Iskon Boston, which is actually a very educative center. 
where we offer training and education to bring out the beautiful angel out of us, which is right now covered over. There is an angel within us and an animal within us also. How to starve the animal and how to bring out the angel. That's the goal of life, actually. So, I told you one principle of Ramayana, which is pure love. When our <clears throat> love blossoms in our heart, we can bring out the angel within us. And that love for God will permeate the whole world as love for all, naturally. When you, uh, loving God is like a master switch. You switch on the master switch, all the other switches will be on. Light will be on, fan will be on, everything will be on. So, on this auspicious occasion of Ram Nami, I pray that our dear Sita Ram, Lakshman Hanuman, hmm, these great, pure, divine, transcendental personalities, bless every one of you and uh, offer you uh, the sublime wisdom of the scriptures in such a way that you can awaken that pure love agape, we call it, your universal love within you. Uh, and that love may it offer you inner fulfillment, which is Nishreya's, uh, along with your Abhyudai, which is the external accomplishments. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, So I forgot to mention, Prabhu is also the one of the global duty officers at ISKCON. So Prabhuji, at least twice a year, he comes to the United States and he'll be coming to give his association again. In the month of May, he'll be here and we'll be having again one such program. So all of you can take advantage. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. And on behalf of everyone, we are very grateful to you. Thank you. Have a wonderful program. Thank you.